I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms and I want to welcome you all to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little different. It's still going to be a thrift flip, so it's items that I've thrifted or bought and we're going to try to do some Pottery Barn hacks. So I recently was out bumming and swung through Pottery Barn and I'm like, well gosh, the prices are outrageous. I bet you I can hack some of these. So I kind of did some more research and I found a bunch of items and I actually did more than what I'm showing you today because my video would have been super long. So I am going to show you some Pottery Barn hacks today, uh, things that I have thrifted, um, gotten free, uh, went to the dollar store and used those items to make Pottery Barn lookalikes. So I hope you enjoy and let me know at the end what you think. So for our first Pottery Barn hack, we are going to do the Color Block Glass Mason Jar Vase. I saw this right away and uh, because of my recent video, I love the blue. Um, so I went thrifting and I found this glass vase. Uh, regular $3.99. I did get it at half price, so it was $2. I'm going to take blue tape and I am going to block off the lower half of the glass jar. Uh, to create that um, lower half, I guess, color block. Um, what I'm going to do is just make sure that the two pieces, uh, the two ends of the tape just line up real nice so it's a nice clean line. And then I'm going to take um, and rub all the way along that just to prevent any bleed through of the actual paint. I am using the Rust-Oleum's Coastal Blue Chalked Paint. And when I do paint on just standard mason jars, I do do two coats of paint. And that's what I'm going to do here as well. So I'm going to do um, two coats of the blue paint. Um, just try to keep the uh, strokes, um, brush strokes down to a minimum. I just try to always even it out real nice. Uh, let that dry in between coats. Um, but I'm thinking this is going to be a great hack. So here I have the two coats of blue done. I've removed the tape. Um, I did use the, like I said, Rust-Oleum's chalked paint uh, to do the blue. And now I am going to do two coats of clear coat with the Minwax uh, Polyacrylic. And this vase runs $146 from Pottery Barn. I honestly cannot believe that anyone in their right mind would pay that for something so simple, but I'm absolutely loving how this is all turning out. So yes, um, two coats of the poly on here, and I'm going to show you how well or how awesome this turned out. So the next Pottery Barn hack will be the... Um, it is called the aloe vera plant and the terracotta pot. Uh, so it's a faux potted spiked aloe plant. Uh, the price on this is one is $49.50. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the hack. I ended up finding um, these what appear to be similar to the look of an aloe vera plant. Um, it is unfortunately not one but it still looks like it, so we're gonna use that. And then I found these actually um, when I was garbage picking, they were uh, on the roadside, so I grabbed those. So we're gonna do two. Um, so basically it would be worth uh, roughly almost $100, and we've invested, or I have invested $2, so a dollar each from the dollar store. So let's go ahead and get this project started. So for starters, we're going to take the Waverly White Wax and we're going to white wax it. Um, the pots from the Pottery Barn do have like a, a white waxed appearance. Plus I'm going to use, I think this is like called moss. Um, it is a uh, just a, um, a paint that I ended up picking up at... Uh, the Hobby Lobby, and on the, the containers, there's little, it looks like moss. So we're gonna make that moss effect with the paint moss. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and I'm just gonna dump a little bit of the white wax, and we're gonna do, just put some on and rub it off and make it look 
aged like the, the pads at the pottery barn. And I'm going to just dab it off. And I'm just going to kind of stipple a little bit more on. Just like that. I love how it's turned out. And then what I like to do as well, is like just to do a little bit of the inside as well. Like a little hair. Just for the right where the base of the plant sits. So there's the one. Let's go ahead and do the secondary one. So I took the moss and I just added a little to the plate and just like I did with the white wax, I just kind of stippled it on uh, just randomly to make it look like moss was growing on the pot, like it had been there for, for years. I think it turned out just great. So I bought this dry foam at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut it open and just use one piece of it. So it was really um, quite inexpensive. Uh, one chunk is going to fill both of the containers and I'm actually going to have some leftover. So I'm going to eyeball it up here, uh, cut a chunk off and try to put it in there, realizing very quick that it's too tall. So cut another piece off of it and then fill around. I will do that for both of the containers uh, and then it will be ready for the next step. So now we're going to make, uh, um, for the top here, uh, the actual description talked about sand and having a sand top. So now that this is in real nice and tight, what I have done in the past is I have, um, for my containers to make it look like soil or to make it look a certain way, what I've done um, is I've taken coffee grounds and I've mixed it with school glue and then put it on top and it actually looks like soil and it hardens right up and uh, it works perfect. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the same thing but we are going to do it with sand. So another thing um, at the uh, Pottery Barn, they sell the sand for super expensive and you can go to the Dollar Tree and get the sand for a buck. So I'm adding the glue to the sand and mixing it really well. Uh, I'll probably add just, I think, a little bit more sand to this uh, to make, an, and this should be enough for both of the containers. Now, initially, it's going to, you're going to see the, the glue in there a little bit. It's not going to be as dark as it had been. But once that glue dries, it will turn dark again. 
and uh, I'm just wiping off the excess and uh, then once it looks all smoothed out and perfect then I'm going to go and take that aloe vera plant and or the faux aloe vera plant and I am going to just stick it right in the glue um, it will stick into that foam plus the glue will harden in place and we'll do that with both of the containers and uh, it typically does take a couple days for that glue to completely dry in the sand or the like I told you the coffee grounds but the overall effect is awesome and I absolutely love it so the next hack uh, there's really no hack other than you have to really look when you're thrifting so I was coming up with this idea to do the hacks for um, Pottery Barn and I was at the local thrift store and uh, prior to going to the thrift store, I had seen on the Pottery Barn catalog that they had apothecary jars. And when I was there, I found three jars. So I found this one, I found this one, and then I did find a jar. And unfortunately this one has a lid, but it has just a flat base on the bottom. So when I looked at the prices of, um, the actual jars on the Pottery Barn, the size, this size would run around $49.50 and I paid $6 for it. Um, the larger size, which is just um, a bit taller than this one, uh, would run roughly around $59 and I paid $7.99 for that one. And then the shorter one um, and I, I'm probably not really comparing apples to apples because again, this one does not have one of these little bases, but it does sort of look like an apothecary jar. And that one is normally around $39.50 and I paid $4 for this one. So I'm really loving my find. I love these jars. So I'm kind of always on the lookout for them. I just think they're so cool looking. Uh, and so in, and I've been collecting them for a while, but uh, I kind of scored big when I ran in um, to the local Goodwill recently. So that is the apothecary chars, and I'll show you what it looks like all decorated up. So the next hack we're gonna do is the beaded garland. So it, <laughs> I cannot believe that somebody would pay 90 or $99 for this, but at the Pottery Barn uh, with all these little beads, uh, they are selling their black beaded garland that has 85 of these little beads uh, for $99. Uh, they put it on a type of um, rope similar to this as well. So I ended up getting these little beads at uh, Hobby Lobby and I did buy, um, I ended up buying six packs. I ended up using five of the packs. I'm glad I bought that many uh, because I did not realize when I first uh, was going to do this project that there was 85 little beads needed. So I wanted to try to compare apples to apples, cost to cost. So each of these packages were $1.50. So, um, so about $7.50 so far in beads that we have going on. And we're gonna need, according to this, it's 120 inches long uh, for the actual rope. Um, this jute, that I did get at uh, Walmart, I think this was like six, seven dollars, something like that. And I am obviously I'm not gonna use that much of it, um, but we can definitely hack this. So I am going to take the Waverly Ink chalk paint. And uh, when I show you guys what um, this looks like, you're gonna see that they're painted black and they almost appear Maybe it's just a little like white wax or something like that. They're just kind of, they're not pure black. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all painted. So I looked for the skewer sticks, couldn't find any, but thank goodness I have a lot of paintbrushes. So what I plan on doing is putting these all on the paintbrushes. 
So after uh, starting the project, I realized real quick why Pottery Barn was charging $99. Uh, to paint 85 of these little beads by hand took a long time. Uh, I highly doubt uh, Pottery Barn is having anybody paint each individual bead, uh, but uh, it did take a little bit to paint all the beads. One thing I have to say, though, is that Ink Waverly Black Paint coverage is amazing. I only had to do one um, coat, so that saved a little bit of time there. And uh, then after it dried, uh, my daughter did help me with the waxing of the beads. So I just slightly put a little wax on and then she um, took a, a towel or like a paper towel and, and blended it um, to give it the look that I was going for. Uh, overall, I'm absolutely ecstatic how this turned out. I will be definitely using this in my decor. So I went ahead and I strung up all 85 beads. This baby is going to be long, as you can see. And at the end, they just have a knot, um, like a looped knot. So I'm just going to start on the one end and I'm going to loop it through and just tie a knot on the one end. And that's basically what they did. And then I'm going to trim this off. So that's the one end. And then I'm going to make it fairly, fairly tight or, you know, where it, ha it has some give to move and decorate with. And then we're going to do the same thing on this end. And roughly the same size knots on both ends and there you have it so this cost us roughly uh like seven dollars and fifty cents approximately for the beads and then maybe with the rest of the material like the paint and the you know the string let's say an additional fifty cents i don't know roughly eight dollars it cost to build the beads and we um, definitely, I love it. I love the, the look of it. Uh, I painted them all black and then I did use that Waverly wax to just add a, a little bit of dimension to it, um, like it showed in the picture. So I actually, I'm gonna be using this in my own home. <laughs> I love it so much. The next one is a starfish in a glass cloche. So I went into my stash of glass that I have. I'm like, I know I have a cloche that's rounded. I found it on my shelf of glass. So I had this. I'm guessing I probably paid at the time, the most I would have paid for it is like a couple bucks. So let's say I paid $4 for it. Um, then I'm just using this piece that I got at the Hobby Lobby. I think that these were roughly $4. And then I used to build terrariums when I had my shop and I have um, the starfish. So it's gonna be a real easy uh, dupe because you just put the starfish in the cloche and you're set. So I just wanted to show you, it's very easy to fill up the actual container. I just kind of tossed them in and shook them about and tried to get as many of these in the container as I could. Initially, I did not think I was going to have enough starfish and got a little concerned, um, but it was a benefit that they're very oddly shaped. Uh, so I just had to put that piece of wood and then flip it over. And it's really as easy as that. Um, and we all hope that if you have a guest over, they don't pick it up. All right, so the actual image does show the base being black. So I am taking the Waverly uh, ink chalk paint and I'm going to give both sides a good coat. Um, again, the coverage of this chalk paint is amazing and I only need to do one coat per side uh, and it went pretty quick. So I did paint the base black, both sides, got that all set. And if you all know me, uh, I love distressing stuff. So it took 
a lot to not distress this. <laughs> right away, I'm like, okay, I'm pulling out the sandpaper. But in the image, it was a very clean base, um, black base. So we left that. And I filled up uh, this with, and I counted them out. I actually undid it and then redid it. It was 30 of the stars. So when I bought these stars, I think I, I was trying to find, um, it was a while ago, but I think it was roughly 25 cents a star. So with 30 of the stars, it came to around $7.50 for that portion of it. Um, and I think this was either like $1.99 or $2.99 at the Hobby Lobby. Uh, and uh, then I had this in the basement. So if I would have paid for it, the most I would have paid is like 2 to $3 for the, the cloche. So roughly it's $13. And at uh, Pottery Barn, this, this actually goes for $75 for the same type of look. So I'm going to show you what um, it looks like all displayed up. All right. So the next hack we're going to do is uh, there is a barn door star. So we're going to take four boards and I cut the boards to um, 22 inches long by um, and they're one by sixes. So I cut them all 22 inches long. Um, so it will be 22 by 22, um, the very close in size to what Pottery Barn is selling as well. And the first step we're going to take is the uh, Farmhouse Red Chalked Paint um, to paint all the boards the same color. So I'm going to paint them the front and the back all with the chalked paint and let's get started. Um, I'm using this barn red because uh, it's bright, just like uh, what uh, Pottery Barn's barn, it's basically, it looks just like it. Very bright, vibrant. Uh, I loved it. So let's go ahead and get this started. I wanted to show you, I use these cross boards and I just nailed them in to the board so that it held it all together. And then now we're going to draw out the barn star. So the one thing that we're gonna do a little different than what the Pottery Barn hack is, on the Pottery Barn hack, they do have these cross boards that go like into an X. Uh, I'm just going to simplify it and I'm going to make it look like a barn door by just having the actual lines of the wood. So I think that will really look good. So now we're going to draw on the um, star. So now it's time to draw the star. So um, I determined that I wanted it in about two inches on each side. So that's what I'm going to do is measure in about two inches and I am going to just start drawing the star out and we'll go from there. So we're two inches on from each end in and then I kind of calculated and I thought like around four and a half inches um, to the center and so those are going to be our two measurements that we're going to be using to create the star.
and I am using a chalk pencil just to um, draw out the uh, outline of the star. Um, it's much easier to see a chalk pencil than it, it would be to see a pencil. So we're just um, making the outline of the star now. And then I want to just recap what I did. So I basically measured in two inches and then I measured in another four and a half inches and measured in two inches and then another four and a half inches to create my ends. And then from this, this point, I measured in two inches and then another four and a half inches. So a total of really six and a half inches to, to create the points this way. And then what I did is I just connected all the dots. So that is how we got our star. So now I'm gonna take blue tape and I am just going to frame in the entire outline of the star. Uh, so I just uh, cut um, angles on the tape where each of the um, star points went in. Uh, so I get a really nice crisp look uh, to the when I paint the actual star itself. The one thing I would recommend, the one tip, when using any type of blue tape like this, just like I said with the other, um, uh, when I, we did the blue vase, always make sure you rub your finger along the edge of that blue tape just so it really secures and you're not getting any bleed through of, um, of the paint. So we have two coats on, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the tape. We're hoping we have good crisp lines. Oh, I went out of. I have to do a couple touch ups. That looks crisp. Looking good so far. Perfect. So I'm just going to touch up a little bit of the red where I had to wipe off because I went got a little overly zealous with my paintbrush. So I'm just going to fix that. So here I'm using the poly acrylic um, by Minwax. I'm doing a two coats of coverage. The recommendation I would recommend is uh, do the red first, then the white, so you don't cross contaminate uh, either color. Uh, and this baby was $298.99 at Pottery Barn, and it roughly cost us $10 to build it. Basically the wood. So what did you guys all think? 
in the comments section, go ahead, put down your favorite hack, and if you wanna see more. I do have more available. Uh, this video would have gotten far too long if I would have included every single one. So I'll see you guys on Monday. If you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet and you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications, and we'll see you Monday.